Good morning, family. We are all good morning. Welcome to day five of our Morning to Revival, our last day together. Thank you for being a part and thank God for the consistency and the understanding that he has enabled us to have this season. Amen. Amen. We lift up our voices together and worship the name above every other name. And that name is Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. You thank you, Lord. Your son who you give us. You're faithful. We thank you, Father, that he came to us while we were still sinners. You did not hold him back, Lord. You sent him to us, knowing, Lord, that he will be rejected by many. Knowing that even after his crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection, many will still worship idols. But we know, Lord, that we will not all embrace you, as many will still turn against you. I recognize the authority. We thank you because he was focused, he was committed to doing your business and your business, Lord. He is the son of Father when he finished the work. You gave him a name above all other names. Thank you, Father. Glorious God. All the wondrous mention of his name. So grateful. All these will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is God. And those the glory of the Father. And you will magnify your sacred name this morning. Because you are the holy, holy, holy God. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, Father. You holy, holy, holy. Bless your name, Lord. Things to be in the Say, thank you, Father. You belongs all glory and honor okay. in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank Lord. We are so grateful. Take care of us. Thank God for everything that He has done for us throughout the week and thank Him for bringing us to the end. Let us pray. Mighty God, our Father, we thank you for that which you have done in our midst. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for the new territory that you've taken us into. We thank you, Father, because you've given us the map, O oh God, to chart the waters, giving us direction, glorious God, our Father, giving us depth, depth, O oh God, of the water. And you, giving us, oh Lord, a reason to wake up every morning to that which you have deposited in our neighborhood, in our yard, Father, to encounter your messenger. Thank you for helping us grow. Father, we thank you. Pray, Father, that the knowledge that we have received put into practice, Lord. And we will see your strong hand. Lord. Even as you back your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. Lord. But I will Lord. celebrate Lord. you because you are God all by yourself. Lord. You are our creator. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Welcome, amen. family. So I have the fifth day of a morning to your revival. So as we round up today, I still have a few, few things that I would like to share with us. And uh, the Lord is going to help us to, you know, take it all the way to the end. Amen. Today, I want to begin by talking about the dew being a witness. Amen. The dew is a witness. Yesterday, we spoke about the circuit of... um. The circuit of water and the circuit of the word. Amen. And we read a few scriptures together. So today we want to expound on a few things just to complete the trend of thoughts that we began to establish yesterday. The dew is a witness. You know, when we're raising the altar of expansion and every time we go to raise the altar, for those who are really keen in the process, you realize that we speak about the stone being a witness. 
Amen. And we say that everything, the reason why the stone is part of the process of making the anointing oil is because the stone can keep information. Everything that we say in that setting, the stone is the witness to the process. So upon leaving that environment, if we forget um, some of the things which have been said, one thing we can guarantee is that the stones that are being used in the process will not forget what has been said throughout that process. So too is the dew, amen. But let's begin from somewhere. <clears throat> Joshua 24, verse 27, I'm reading from the Berean Standard Bible. It says, and Joshua said to all the people, you see, this stone, it will be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words the Lord has spoken to us, and it will be a witness against you if you ever deny your God. That's the scripture we typically will use while making the anointing oil and praying over the stones as part of the elements of um, the anointing oil process. Amen. Now, the Bible talks about many other witnesses. Amen. It talks about many other witnesses. And let's take a look at them from the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. It says, so we have these three witnesses. The Greek word for witnesses, which I inserted there is material, which means to bear witness or to testify. I believe we all know what who a witness and what a witness does, who a witness is and what a witness does. Now it says, so we have these three witnesses. Who are they? And all what are they? Now, verse 8 says, the spirits the water, and the blood. And then it goes further to say, and all three agree. Amen. So not only do we have a stone or stones as witnesses, we equally have the spirit, the water, and the blood being witnesses. Amen. So in our list of witnesses, let's include all these four there are others in the scripture, but these are the four that I want to bring to our attention based on our study in this season. So if um, the spirits, the water, and the blood are witnesses, it therefore means that they carry, they have us some kind of information that may not be visible to the human eyes. But if we go the extra mile with them, we can easily decode from them what information they carry concerning humanity. Let's use a simple example. When you and I feel sick, sometimes we know what we are sick of, and uh, sometimes we do not know what we are sick of. Now, the typical process is that when this sickness continues, we will go to the doctor to get diagnosed. Most often we will go with our own mindsets. Like you tell the doctor, you know, I think this is what I'm sick of. I think this is it. You know, the doctor may even speculate, but one of the first things that they do is that they do a blood draw. Because every physician that is well-trained knows that the blood carries records. And we can make mistakes, but the blood, the record of the blood will never be wrong. Because the blood, the reports of the blood from the blood is a witness. We can tell the doctor that we eat very healthy all we want. All he needs to do is to draw our blood and tell us what our lipid profile is. And that is, is it's going to give us an accurate picture of what our health status is in regards of in, in light of what we just told him. That is how the blood bears witness in the physical. And of course, we have spoken at length about how the blood bears witness in the spirit. But I use that example to help us know how um, the blood or these elements bear witness. They carry information about us that we may not even think that they do, but they really do. Amen. We can say everything we want to say, how we want to present it. But when we consult the spirits, it gives us the most accurate version of that story. 
When we consult the water, it gives us an accurate version. So too is the blood and the stones. Amen. Amen. Now, yesterday we established that rain and snow comes from above. And what they do is that they do not return void, but they accomplish every purpose for which they were sent here on earth, meaning they water the earth, they provide water to the plants and uh such that they board and then the, the, the water returns. So too, the word of God, which comes out from the mouth of God, it doesn't return to him void. It accomplishes everything that he pleases. Now, we said that the dew, which is a messenger from the Lord, which carries the presence of the Lord, which carries the voice of the Lord, and which make, makes a person great. We said that this messenger, messenger dew comes down with information blessings for us and doesn't return void now one of the reasons why it does not return voice void is because water is a witness it brings information the witness from heaven it brings information to the earth and it also carries information from man back to god Mm. So we cannot say we cannot tell the Jew what to do. It knows exactly what it meant as a witness, and it will carry exactly what it meant back to the Father. Amen. Amen. That is why Jew is a witness because water is a witness. Amen. Amen. So when we say that the messenger Jew brings information and carries it back, this is exactly what we are saying because it is a witness, just like the blood. And the spirit and the stones are all witnesses. They do carry accurate information about humanity and the activities that surround them. It almost feels like the elements that surround us are recorders. We may deny everything that we, 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 that we have done, but the elements have bore witness already. Amen. Amen. This is a common saying amongst children and even amongst adults that walls have ears. Yes, they do. We understand what they mean because think about it. Most walls are made of stone and elements of the earth. And if elements bear witness, of course, we can therefore conclude that they have ears because they are listening and keeping records that if the father had to consult them, it would provide accuracy in those aspects of our lives. Amen. Amen. So like we said, the circuit of water and the circuit of the word, Isaiah 55, 10 to 11, NASB and New King James, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it produce and sprout and providing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. Amen. So I'm just repeating myself based on what we've talked about. That we establish that the Jew never returns to the father void. Why? Because the Jew is a witness. And we saw this in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. So we have these three witnesses. Amen. The spirit, the water, and the blood, and all three agree. So let me just say something here, which I really did not plan to. When we sit uh, with a bottle or a cup or a glass of water beside us, amen, mm -hmm. and we speak words, be it negative or positive, I want us to be reminded that that glass of water or that cup of water or bottle of water is listening, is bearing witness to our words. So if we speak negative and then we carry that water and drink, just imagine what you have drunk. Amen. Amen. Why some people will take the water and actually speak to it, bless it. Some people actually take water, speak to it and pray for people because there is something about the water. But that is not our focus. We'll get to that some other time in another season. But just to help us know that because it is a witness, it is listening to us. So let's be mindful about what we say around our water and then we consume it. Amen. Amen. Now, during the fourth watch, based on the article that was sent out, um, there were several scriptures that we put out for us to study and understand 
why those scriptures are relevant for that watch. And that was the same for every watch. There are specific scriptures because Jesus Christ carried specific activities at different watches. So when we put out the article, we, we outlined certain scriptures for each watch because they were applicable to that specific watch. Now I'm just gonna read through a few of those scriptures which are applicable to the fourth watch. And it is this watch in which we are observing right now. Now it goes like this in Psalm 55 verse 17. And as I read through, I want us to see what is common to all the scriptures for the fourth watch. Amen. Amen. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Psalm 119, 147. I rise early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your words. Psalm 46, verse 5. God is with her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Psalm 118, verse 13. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. Isaiah 50, verse 7 to 9. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justified me, who will contend with me. Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Psalm 130 verse 6. I want my Lord to come and help me. More than a guard at night wants the morning to come. Yes, I want my Lord to come quickly even more than that. Amen? Amen. And another scripture is Lamentations 3, verse 22 to 23. And it says, through the Lord's mercies, we establish that the word there is not mercies, it's the word favor. So it goes, through the Lord's favor, we are not consumed because his compassion, or in other words, his mercies, fail not. Amen. Through the Lord's favor, we are not consumed because his compassions or his mercies fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. One of the reasons why we have these scriptures or before that, when we look at these scriptures, it talks about the Lord coming to our rescue, coming to help us, coming to uplift us our burdens. Amen. Amen. Now, when we put out scriptures like this, it's not for us to recite them and just know them. Amen. It's for us to recognize that at this time is when the help of the Lord is being dispatched to the earth. It is when the help of the Lord is being dispatched to the earth. So we need to position ourselves to receive the dew of the morning or position ourselves at the morning dew to receive that help, not just to quote the scriptures. Amen. The scriptures Amen. are there to give us guidelines on how to, um, to, to direct our expectations concerning the watch of the day. Amen. Now, the Bible tells us that, um, let's look at this together. In Psalm 68, verse 19, I'll read from the Berean Standard Bible and the King James Bible. It says, Blessed be the Lord who daily bears our burden, the God of our salvation, Selah. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Now, this is very important. I want to tie this in with everything that we have spoken, um, every scripture that we have quoted prior. When we position ourselves at the foot watch, we are position, positioning ourselves to receive help. We are positioning ourselves to receive daily help. We are positioning ourselves to receive daily blessings, daily benefits. Amen. So Amen. if it comes down to the favor of the Lord, we are positioning ourselves to receive the, a new batch of favor for the day. 
So what does this imply? It implies that if we receive a batch of 100% of favor today at the morning due, and we use up 65, or let's say we use up 50% of it, tomorrow, if we need a brand new batch, we need to still position ourselves to receive a brand new batch of favor from the Lord. Otherwise, on the following day, we run on 50%, the leftover of the previous day. So we get the picture. Mm. Because he daily loads us with benefits. But we have to daily position ourselves to receive the benefits. Otherwise, we roll on the leftovers. And then we run out. And then we think the Lord is not with us. But daily, he sends down to you packaged with his blessings for us and the dew returns to him with records from us but we need to daily position ourselves to receive be it the mercies the mercies of god the favor the compassion of god it's clearly written in verse 23 they are new every morning they are new every morning new every morning so how can we ensure and how can we take responsibility to receive a new batch every morning? It's at the morning dew, where we don't just come and quote the scriptures of help, but we know how to position ourselves and expect help to come from us. Because quite often we quote scriptures with no expectations and no faith attached to it. The scriptures are there to help us set our expectations right. It's okay to ask for help at any given time of the day. But if your boss tells you that it is at this hour of the day that we need you to be here to do a certain um, activity of the day, wouldn't you show up at that time? So too, the boss of the earth is saying, in the morning dew or during the morning dew, I send down the dew from heaven with my help, expecting to meet you and expecting to deliver to you when he comes or when the dew comes and or when the Lord himself comes through the dew to us and doesn't meet us, it goes back with the reports that I did not meet them. It's a witness. Amen. Amen. It is Amen. a witness. It leaves with the report that I did not meet them or it leaves with the report that I met them expectant and I met them and, and they received what I had in store for them. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we can spare ourselves unnecessary and excessive prayers, you know, of asking for help if we can just position ourselves and strategically do so um, during the appropriate times to receive from the Lord the things he has in store for us at, the, at those hours of the day. Amen. And the morning dew is a time when we wake up and say, Lord, help me. I position myself to receive your help, be it in the form of angels or destiny helpers or new ideas or new orientation. Whatever be the case, I need help and I know that this is the hour to receive it. Don't wake up at noon when it's time to be, when darkness has covered the earth and you start asking for help. At that time, what the prayer you should be praying is the sun will not smite me by day. Amen. That's the prayer you should be praying at that time. Because yeah. at that time, darkness has covered the earth. Amen. Amen. So this is what you need to be calling out the Lord for. Amen. Amen. But if we have positioned ourselves properly and received this help in the morning, it will help us appropriately navigate our steps during the day. Amen. Amen. Now, here I said, beyond conf confessions of the scriptures, the fourth watch, watch scriptures, we should carry out the prophetic acts consistently with understanding and come back with testimonies. We have shared so many prophetic acts. We will add to them today by way of um, concluding. Amen. He daily loads us with benefits. Now, remember, God himself writes on the water, on the dew. The dew is a message from God to his people. The drying up of the dew is an indication that his message, his blessings for the day have been delivered and records from his people have been collected and delivered to him. 
the dew is a witness. My question to us today is that does it matter to us what information the Lord receives about us? It matters Absolutely. to me. So if the dew is a messenger and a witness, it matters to me what it carries back to the Lord. It matters. It matters to me what an undercover boss carries back to his um to the CEO of the company. It matters if I'm work if I'm part of that company. Now let's take a look at a few things here. Isaiah 50, verse 4. This is equally um one of the scriptures for the fourth uh, watch. It says, the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed poem that is true for everybody to know the word that sustains the weary. Now, but how does he do it? How, does, how has he activated it? He says, he wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. Amen. Amen. During the morning period like this, we position ourselves to be activated. How, how does that happen? At this hour, he instructs us. He, he, and the instructions that we receive from the Lord is part of the delivery of his help towards us. Because we know how an appropriate response to a person or a given situation can change that person or the situation. So based on how he instructs us, then are we able to deliver a word in season? Amen. But the morning view is when he does that, he restructures things. He brings information to us that will help us navigate the day properly, even with our words. Amen. It mm -hmm. says that the sovereign Lord has given me a well instruct instructed tongue. There is no dispute about that. To know the word that sustains the weary. That is our guarantee. Now it says that he wakens me morning by morning. Wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. He wakens me morning by morning. It is a desire of the Lord that we wake up morning by morning. Do not say that I heard the Lord yesterday or I received help yesterday, so I will not wake up today because I know we have good reasons. I hear us, but this is a call to help us realize what we are missing in the process. He wakens me morning by morning. In other words, every morning, the Lord is in the business of waking us every morning because he knows what he's releasing upon the earth and he wants us to be partakers of it Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, Amen. based on that understanding, remember it's talking about the tongue and the ear. Have we realized that even though the Lord has given us a well-instructed tongue, sometimes we say the wrong things. Now, the Bible tells us all of those. We can now use the dew. Remember, we talked about touching the dew and just wiping on our face and declaring favor coming our way. We can equally use that dew to touch our tongue and begin to declare that the Lord indeed has given me a well-instructed tongue. And based on the message that has been released through the dew to the earth for me, I receive it and that my tongue will proclaim it for the glory of the Lord. They are prophetic actions. Amen. We mm -hmm. need to keep them in faith, understanding the power in water and the information that the dew carries. Amen. So Deuteronomy 32 verse 2 says, my doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb and all the showers upon the grass. Here I said that we want that our speech for the day to be his speech. We want to say what he says. We want our doctrines to be his doctrines. We want our speech to be his speech. My speech shall distill as the dew, the speech of the Lord shall distill 
as the dew. So I therefore touch the dew and transfer his speech to my speech. And we speak using our tongue. So we use that and touch our tongue, declaring that our speech is the speech of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Then next, Right, right here. We use the dew to touch our ears and make declarations. Amen. Remember Isaiah 50 verse 4. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue. Another translation says that he has given me a tongue of a disciple to know the word which sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning. Wakens what? My ear. So listen like one being instructed. So we touch the dew and apply it on our ears and make declarations that this morning I am awake and my ears hear the word of the Lord. Remember the dew carries the voice of the Lord and it carries the presence of the Lord. So by touching the dew and applying on your ears, you're transferring the, the voice and transmitting the voice of the Lord to your ears. Amen. So that you can hear him, their prophetic actions. Amen. Use mm -hmm. the use the dew to open your ears because the ears are the transmission medium of his voice. Use the dew to anoint the, the back of your ears. Awaken my ears for the day that I may hear your voice. That's a declaration. Awaken my ears for the day that I may hear your voice, that I may have clarity of what you're saying to me for the day. Because he's speaking. He is always speaking. So what we are doing here is positioning ourselves intentionally to hear exactly what he is saying. And of course, yesterday we talked about this can equally step on the dew and declare you know if you want prosperity in your finances use the morning dew step on it do so before you go for a major interview to close a major con contract those are all prophetic actions we do them by faith why because the dew is packaged with blessings for his children amen amen I'd like for us to grab our communing elements, beloved. I'll read this and play a song for us. First John 5, 7 to 8, we've talked about this already. It says, so we have these three essences, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And all three agree. Amen. 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 We thank God for the body and the blood of Jesus Christ and uh, break the bread and partake together. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are so glorious God, God for the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For your goodness. We thank you, Father, that you've given us three witnesses here on the earth. So grateful. Spirits. So grateful. To the Father. Every thank you for the understanding. We thank you. The word, the word that has come here from the Father. This bread is a representative. As we make declarations concerning our lives this morning. In the name of Jesus. The bear thank you. Shall be witness of the word and every declaration shall come to pass. Be this day in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Stand here. We thank you for your love and your goodness that has been demonstrated to us in this manner. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Beloved, would there be any comments before we proceed? Any feedbacks? Today is the last day of our morning to revival. Any testimonies? that you would like to share with us for the glory of God. Amen. 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 I want to thank the Lord for this week, for this morning's revival. 
Uh, it's been some time, I can say years, that the Lord has put on my heart to be praying on water for anybody that is sick, anybody that has any issue. Beside anything on the sick, the Lord gave me that instruction, and I have been doing it, but uh, sometimes I feel reluctant of a prey on the water. I'm like, is it a, a one shot fits all or what? And I did not quite understand, but I have done it very often. But if this uh, teaching that we have received, I know that, yes, it's something that we should be doing often and any time. Because the water uh, carries the voice of the Lord. The water transmits the message the Lord has for us. The water bear witness. And if today's uh, teaching, I see that we really need to be careful whatever we say around the water. So I really, really want to thank the Lord for the eye opening and uh, this great uh, knowledge that we have received. As uh, my husband always leave the house during the morning due to go to work and uh, he missed all the, of this teaching, I was telling him what we were uh, teaching yesterday and uh, he reminded me that before they become born again, when they are going to an exam, when someone is sick, their dad will leave a glass of water under the dew, make sure the dew come in it and give it to them to drink, and they are here, and they do well on the exam, and all of that. It's now he is understanding why his dad used to do that, but they have never given them uh, the explanation, so we thank the Lord for what he has taught us this week. Thank you, Mama Minjirat. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. I just want to go next, please. Thank the Lord. So, um, recently the Lord has been impressing in the atmosphere beyond the morning dew, the use of water for many um prophetic acts. So, morning dew being now um the precious things of heaven that we receive here is just a big addition to what is already ongoing. So I give God glory that he brought this message in a timely fashion, you know, so that we can, in this prayer ourselves, thousand hours of, of prayer by just doing this prophetic act. And I believe that um things are about to take another turn. Amen. Amen. If we can just engage, yes. And nobody will be left behind. Amen. Can take one last testimony anybody has? Yeah, I can go next. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pastor Mildred. Um, it, it really did feel like a revival. I'm so grateful for understanding. I know for me, I always I always thought it was interesting that every time I would if I needed to if I needed some type of breakthrough in my life, especially in my business. It's really funny. I would always just get in the shower and I would hear something. I would I would get direction every time. And I started saying the Lord speaks to me when I get in the shower. Um and I you know it became like a, a personal tradition of mine. If I if if I really need something or if I, if I need to hear from God or I need to make a big decision, I would just, let me just jump in the shower. And funny enough, that's where I, you know, God would meet me. But now you've, you've given us the word to, to really back up the fact that um, the voice of the Lord is carried through water. And I'm so grateful you know, I sent you the gift that I've been dancing in water. Now I don't need, I'm taking 10 showers a day, okay? Um, very, very, very grateful. And again, this morning, like you just said, um, we have to be mindful of the things that we say with water just next to us. And 
you know, sometimes it's a bad habit of us to maybe talk down on ourselves when we're having a bad day, but there's a glass of water just sitting there with just no idea of the things that we have set in motion, you know, with the walls having ears. And, and I thought it was interesting because, you know, God created everything on earth to worship him. Now, if these things are worshiping him, that means that they, they, they're awake and somewhat conscious, you know, from the the air to the the waves, the the water and all these things. And and I just don't understand why I never thought about water listening um to me and the things that come out of my mouth. So I've just been very blessed. This this has been um just awesome, awesome, awesome teaching and just a, a strong motivator to to keep showing up at the fourth hour to meet with the father amen 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 thank you all um for sharing and pastor will be the last person to give a testimony yeah Thank you, Mother Mildred. Not really a testimony, but just remind us of some of the things that we have heard. You know, when we hear that you jump in the shower and you have like inspiration, you're hearing the voice of the Lord. It's not limited to one person. It's open for all of us. When we hear that they bless a glass of water and give somebody it's not limited to one person or put a glass of water out so that you can collect in it and you have enough to share with the family. Please, those things are not limited to one person, but it's something that we can all be doing. It is creation, you know, that is eagerly waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Creation is waiting for you to understand it. Is waiting for you to take advantage of what God has deposited in need for you. So please, let's engage. Let's engage. What I say, witness, as Mother Mildred has told us this morning, there is none of us who came to the earth without going through the amniotic, you know, fluids. You were born in water. So water has been there from the very beginning. 70% of your body is water. So you have a greater witness in you all the time. And so water can give a better report about you than anything else. And the water is not biased. It will speak the truth concerning your situation. So beloved, we have heard these things. Let us take advantage. And as we know that the fourth watch is important, whether we have morning dew together or not, position yourself to wake up during that period and pray and just receive for yourself. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone, for testifying. Just be reminded that everything came out of water. Everything, mm -hmm. everything came out of water. The earth came out of water. You and I came out of water. Vegetation out of water. Everything. It is that important. Amen. Amen. Okay. So I'd like for us to share our greetings together. May the grace, the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, the love, love of God, and the fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Lord. Spirit be with, with us Lord. now Lord. and forever. And surely God's goodness Lord. and mercies shall follow us all Lord. the days of our lives. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord ever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed day, family. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.